<laughs> and, and to combat Manners Monday, let's bring Mel Gibson on tomorrow and have Jews Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the difference between the two shows. After the break, here's a good radio tease. We get into the Mel Gibson stuff. That's not very nice, though, and, for Manners Monday. Yeah, well, I don't think we should go through Mel Gibson. Whoopi's uh, doing and, nice and radio, so I don't, I don't think she's going to be touching on the Mel Gibson drunk driving story from uh, over the weekend. No. But we will. In its entirety, or she'll hit it with club music under it. Is he crazy? What? What did Whoopi say? What? Where were we going with the um, story of the weekend? Mel Gibson. Let's Mel. get right into it. Love him. He's uh, out of his mind. Lost his mind. He is truly Mad Max, driving around. Thinking about the Jews. <laughs> I love when these Hollywood guys get caught, man. Yeah. Because they got publicists around them. Um... They try to protect them all the time. He went through all that with the Passion of the Christ, uh, all that anti-Jew thing that they, they said the movie was uh, very anti-Jewish. And the publicist uh, spun it, no, you know, Mel isn't like that. And he got a few beers in him, <laughs> got pulled over, and just started spouting. Well, you say some dumb things when you're drunk, don't you? Yeah, but to a cop, are you a Jew? What is that? I don't know. It. He's he, obsessed with the Jews. The thing Jews. is, he, that just shows you when how he, crazy he is yeah, about the Jews. Yeah, when he's not walking the red carpet or doing those dumb interviews on TV, this is how he it's really all thinks. all about the Jews. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he was really, really hammered, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty hammered. Um, they said that they, they pulled him over, noticed him weaving around a little bit. Pulled him over. He got out of the car and um, started talking about how effed he was going to be uh, because he's you, the guy said you're you're under the influence, going to have to take you in. So they were cutting him some slack by saying, "Look, no handcuffs, just cooperate with us." And he's like, "You don't understand how you know effed I am." And as they tried to put him into the car in a scene right out of cops, which I want to see the dash cam of this. Mel tries to make a break for it. <laughs> yeah. He did not. Yes, he he runs. <laughs> tries to run from the cop. What was he gonna hide under a kiddie pool? He's Mel <laughs> Gibson too. Like, what are you gonna do? What? Where can I find Mel Gibson? You know, it's not like he's gonna disappear. I right. call Roger Murtaugh. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Mel. <laughs> Getting too old for this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he tries to run uh, quickly, imagine, quickly apprehended. He, imagine though he's hiding under the kiddie pool and they're like, Mel, we saw you go under the kiddie yeah, pool. What, what do you want? We know who you are and we know where you're at. He's hiding in a closet. What? What? <laughs> right. Doing like they do on cops. What? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm in here. What are you doing? I'm just Ow. searching the closet for Jews. I wasn't doing anything <laughs> wrong. I love this stuff. Looking for Anne Frank. Because, uh, you know, we put all these people on a pedestal, and you realize they're, yeah. they're just like you and I. They're regular people. Only, you know, his choice of uh, ethnicity to bash is different than maybe yours or mine or Jimmy's. or Yes, when you're in Hollywood, ixnay on the Jew bashing, hey, <laughs> stupid ass. Oh, man, that is not smart. Well, don't... well he wasn't able to get backing uh, for passion, Yeah, so he had a pull out all the money out of his own pocket because the Jews, I guess for, and this is another thing with Hollywood. For years, the insiders all know what's going on. When the news breaks enough where the public knows, then all the Hollywood insiders go, we knew this about this guy for years. So he wasn't able to get backing for his movie because he kind of, uh, people knew about his anti-Semitic um, ideology. His stance. Yeah. So uh, he bankrolled the movie himself and lucky for him, it, it made a fortune and, uh, you know, he's rich, didn't need a, a single Jew, <laughs> and um, that was that. But now it came out, uh, yeah, he, he he really has these feelings. Well, let, let's get right into it. This is from CNN. I'm sure it gets even saltier, uh, yeah. but CNN has to play it safe, I guess. Did, did we get through the whole thing, though? The, the cops apprehended him after he tried to bolt? Well, you study this story over the weekend, so yeah. you could add in the stuff they didn't. They didn't okay. add to the CNN. We'll see what they got. Because I don't think got. I don't think they got the sugar blank line. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, here, here's uh, here's the audio from CNN. Reverberations from Gibson's arrest are spreading through Los Angeles. Forget what? Now the L.A. County Sheriff's Department is embroiled in reports they gave Gibson preferential treatment after he was arrested early Friday morning in Malibu, California, on suspicion of driving under the influence of alcohol. 
The entertainment news website, TMZ.com, reports authorities altered the arresting deputy's handwritten report, allegedly removing offensive comments Gibson made when he was arrested. TMZ alleges Gibson spewed obscenities and hurled sexist and anti-Semitic statements, including, quote, effing Jews, the Jews are responsible for all the wars in the world. Gibson then, according to TMZ, turned to the deputy and asked, quote, are you a Jew? <laughs> are you a Jew? That's terrific. That's terrific. <laughs> I do love the fact, though, that the outrage in this country isn't about the fact that he probably could have killed somebody. <laughs> right, right, old. driving drunk. Yes, yeah, uh, so he had just run over the eight-year-old. They were pulling the ribbon out of the out of the back of the uh, rear wheel. <laughs> but then he said something. <laughs> the pink patent leather buckle shoe. <laughs> When's the last time kids wore ribbons, though? I don't know. But it makes a great image it in does, the grill. It does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, let's say hi Dad, to... Was that kid a Jew? <laughs> let's say hi to Cigars and Scotch. Cigars and Scotch. Hey, guys. Hey. I heard they had to take in Gibson when he failed to goose up a straight line. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Bravo. God damn it. That's funny. Yeah, but this <laughs> is a nice, guys. It's Manners Monday. Hey, he did not see the cop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Takes a little while. All right, here we go. More I'll wait. And he was going to give him a drink. He said, I'd offer you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Little wordplay jokes, folks. Elbow, elbow. Hey, so I came close to her, but it's not like I Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a reach. Eh, they got the job done, though. <laughs> You're not going to hear this on Whoopi Show. <laughs> You want nice radio? Tune in to KTU. They're just nice all over the place for you. Of course they are. I just thought of a line so bad I gave myself the douche chill. <laughs> oh, no. But you have to say it. Can't do it. The Hitler line wasn't bad? Good point. He actually said to his friend when he was really drunk, I'm really blitzed, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's funny. That's all right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Craig, Craig, it works. All right. Now, here we go. More Mel Gibson audio. Steve Whitmore, spokesman for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, will neither confirm nor deny the reports of Gibson's alleged statements, but told CNN the arrest occurred without incident, clarifying what that means. Quote, every time somebody is arrested, something out of the ordinary happens, but guns don't always have to be drawn. Without incident means without force. He went on to say, there has been no cover-up by the Sheriff's Department. Nothing has been sanitized. The job of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department is not to focus sanitized. on what he said or didn't say, <laughs> but to establish his blood alcohol level and concentrate on the facts. Nothing has been cleansed. Nothing has been cleansed. <laughs> <laughs> sanitized. This is boring stuff. Oh, well, he, so, um, I, they obviously cleaned it up and gave him preferential treatment, which is fine. Yes. Nice. But he must have been such a dick that they said, we're just going to blow this out for, and, and embarrass him. Why else would they No, no. What, what happened was uh, they, they, they uh, threw him in the cop car. He started with this Jew bashing. Uh, the arresting officer wrote up a report with everything in it. Every slur he made. Uh, about the Jews, the uh, problems he had with him running away from the scene. Well, he was also saying, I own Malibu. Uh, yeah. He was just being such an obnoxious he said, ass to the cops. He you, said, you, you're effed. I'm going to have your job. I own Malibu. I can buy you. I have, I'm going to use all my money to bring you down. Uh, then they bring him to the station. He's uh, sitting there just berating the police officers. Uh, he had to use the, the men's room. Um, and they wouldn't let him, and he was handcuffed. Uh, so he's trying to get his arms around to the front, and they were uh, a little scared that he was going to reach his zipper and make a mess all over the holding cell. So they led him to the bathroom, and uh, right, you gotta let him just you gotta, you gotta let him just stand there and right. stain himself and then photograph it. <laughs> here's, a, here's Mel Gibson. Here's Mel Gibson with a puddle. So they let him do that. Standing in a puddle. Standing in a puddle. How funny would that be? That would be really funny. Just a big dark stain on his uh, jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Mad Max on a wee wee pad <laughs> trying to call his wife in a blackout. A jackass. Well, then uh, he said, I want my phone call. So they brought him to a pay phone, or the phone that they use, and he took it off the wall, and it didn't work. So he started smashing it against the wall, and they informed him that he was going to be charged with more crimes if he broke the phone. Um, then a woman officer walks in, and it's Mel Gibson sitting there, so she looks at him, maybe 
a little too long because Mel decided to turn around and say, "What the he- What the f are you looking at, sugar teas?" <laughs> 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 that's the proper way to address a female police officer that's, to get the uh, proper uh, respect, terrific. to give the proper respect to her. Here's Gibson's apology, I guess. Gibson released a lengthy statement through his publicist Saturday, calling his behavior belligerent and saying, quote, I acted like a person completely out of control when I was arrested acted and like said things that I were. do not believe to be true and which are despicable. I apologize to anyone who I have offended. I disgraced myself and my family with my behavior, and for that... I am truly sorry. And the Jews suck. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to add that in. I just want to go to the beach and fly a kike. I'm really depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, here's uh, the last clip from the Mel Gibson drunk driving thing. Hmm. Anti-Defamation League issued a statement Sunday saying Gibson's apology was, quote, unremorseful and insufficient. They went on to say it does not go to the essence of his bigotry and his anti-Semitism. Which goes much the deeper. The <laughs> is responding to reports that Gibson allegedly made anti-Semitic remarks, allegations Gibson did not directly address in his statement. Gibson's publicist, Alan Nerob, told Oops. CNN on Said, Sunday he didn't comment uh, hamna, 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 Jews. an alcohol rehabilitation program, nor would he address whether Gibson made anti-Semitic remarks during his arrest. He said Gibson's statement speaks for itself. Hamna, Ed Norton's a Jew? <laughs> hamna, hamna, hamna. He's going to go to AA Adolf Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> They'll raise their hands straight out to the right. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> yes, I saw it. Cool yeah, visual. We, it was a nice visual yeah, all the good time to on the radio. Uh, <laughs> wow. So uh, uh, a lot of people, a lot of mixed reaction from Hollywood. Is yeah, what they're of saying. Some people uh, saying, "Ah, the guy's got a problem. He's got a drinking problem." Others, you know, I'm sure somebody like Spielberg, uh, not too happy with him. Katzenberg. Katzenberg. Any Berg, <laughs> not too happy with the guy. Yeah, the Bergs aren't happy. Weinstein, the, probably not happy. The Steens and the Bergs. Steens, the Bergs. And don't think the that if they get angry enough in Hollywood that they can't just wreck you and guarantee the theaters don't carry your stuff. Of course. Yeah, you know, they they can if they get mad enough they could say if you carry any of this guy's stuff you're not getting this or that. Yeah. That, that sounded like a real insider talk, didn't it? You put what, a dope, <laughs> what a water cooler dummy I what am. What are you, a Jew? Just, but that was the biggest non-contribution. <laughs> nah, but dude, they can just, those guys, they're really <laughs> stupid. Who? Oh, I don't know, I just heard once. <laughs> Speculative idiot. Hey, it's Monday, thank you for your input, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, it's true, it's it is being polite. Monday. Yeah, you gotta be more polite. <laughs> more polite and slam my face in my... Oh yeah! Take your place <laughs> and slam it, you babbling idiot! I really am just of no value. But I was hanging out with Mel Gibson. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. You must not be one of those evil Jews. <laughs> what is that guy thinking? I, I uh, don't know. Not. Yeah. Not thinking. I think he has a drinking problem. It could be. You know, you have a few, you have a few uh, beers or something, and uh, God forbid you got to get into the car because you got to get home. What do you do? You drive the best you've ever driven. You, you drive, and you, and if heaven forbid something happens, you you keep your mouth shut. Yeah, right. When the cuffs go on, you know what? Talk about the death. Because yeah. they apparently can hear and don't care. Or just, you know, say you don't have to apologize for the drunk driving and your racist, stupid... What, what are you doing, Mel? It's Hollywood. It's not like you're a construction worker somewhere. What an <laughs> they're, ass. They're going to hear about it. Uh, we do have the latest Gibson audio, too. Mel Gibson. Oh. Let's see. I thought you meant Henry. <laughs> <laughs> for you old, old people. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing. Here's the latest audio. Years ago. I was a little kid. I used to peek out from my bedroom and watch Ronald Martin's leave? laughing. He was 36. <laughs> <laughs> 36. Here's Mel Gibson. Gibson also said he's battled alcoholism all his life and is taking steps to return to help. As for his career, at least one industry leader, agent Ari Emanuel, is calling on Hollywood to give Gibson the cold shoulder. Gibson was also arrested in 1984 in Toronto for drunk driving. And tonight, Gibson's reps confirmed that he is undergoing treatment. Yeah, and the front page of the Post has a uh, Mel Gibson party picture. Mad Mel. 
He just looks like he's having a really good time. Time of his life oh, with yeah. a couple of Aryan girls. A uh, couple of very young blondes. He's completely hammered. The front page of the Post. you got to just pick up the Post today for the front page. This one girl, like Mel Gibson, is completely out of it. He's He has his arms around two broads. And the one girl is trying to make a point because she's got Mel Gibson's attention. Yeah. Look, she's got the finger in the air. She's trying to make some kind of poignant point. And then I tell this guy, <laughs> right. I don't need you because <laughs> I'm my own person. <laughs> right. And it, I want to be an actress, but I have my morals and I'm not going to compromise myself for anything. And Mel's just like... I know. Mel's just thinking when about does, what he's going to do when to these girls. Do your pants come off? Right. My agent wants me to do commercials, but I just don't feel it's artistic <laughs> enough. That's the, I'm about to work. Really? Do you know the Jews run Hollywood? <laughs> well, my agent is Jewish. I didn't realize that there was others. Uh, get away from me. You're tainted. <laughs> what a mess he is. Uh, I'll play with your tainted. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I can mean tainted it, like that, baby. Get the next Mel Mac. And this girl just wants the picture with Mel. That's why she's smiling at the camera. Her friend's obviously taking the picture. Get a picture of me with Mel Gibson. Yeah. Well, well, I got to tell you one thing. His mug shot is a. It's like a headshot. Yeah. Oh, he's got it that is little the Superman best. hair coming yeah. out. Yeah. He's got a little curl. Yeah. In the front, like Superman. <laughs> it is the best photo I've ever seen he's, of this guy. He's absolutely well, he's, dreamy. Yeah. yeah he's, he's smiling me because he knows uh, the whole world's gonna see this picture. He's kind of looking up. Well, you've seen the mug shots on um, Smoking Gun. Yeah. They're horrific. Yeah. Everybody's is. Uh, Yasmin Bleef. Is on there just looking a wreck. No, you know what he was saying right there? Look at his face. He, he was just going, you know who runs Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> and then they snap the face. Like, the Jew. The Jew. Well, that was his like that his prison <laughs> echo. <laughs> <laughs> his mouth is pulled back because he's going, he. <laughs> smiling. It looks like a smile, he. but he's slowly saying he. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I like how they're blaming his racism on the alcohol. Yeah. Like, that's what... Oh, yeah, it was the alcohol. That's Yeah. What, rather than that brought out my inner thoughts. Every time I have a few too many, you know, tip it back, oh. I go off on the poles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just I can't stop talking about Polish people. Now, what's interesting about the, the latest here, a rep for Mel Gibson says, the guy is just trying to stay alive. Alive. That's Please. Tough. The guy is trying to bang young blondes in, in, in uh, Hollywood. He's not an alcoholic. His nose isn't red. He's a great looking guy. <laughs> he went out, he got hammered, and in the man, he spoke his mind. There is not one vein showing in the whites around those dreamy baby blues. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> they really are seductive. You couldn't not sleep with them. <laughs> Male or female. I'm not entirely Mel Gibson. But look no, at those but blues. His mugshot, yeah. dreamy. He That's what that blonde is saying. I'd still blow him. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> that that is a uh, that is a mugshot slash tiger beat cover. Yeah. So that's the latest on Mel. He's pretty much screwed in Hollywood. Oh, and everyone is uh, you know paying attention uh, to the Mel Gibson story. And uh, Michael Starr, he's just terrific. He writes a fine column in the New York Post. And, uh, Does he? I guess he writes about radio here and there. <laughs> and uh, he thought that uh, Jim Kerr's com comments on the Mel Gibson uh, situation was just terrific here in New York City. Was it for a minute in between a Van Halen song yeah, Jim Kerr's and like a, a Queen song? <laughs> you know what sucks? Jim Kerr is a rock jock that's playing the same old old rock songs. Yeah. And uh, he's beating us in the ratings. That is kind of sad. But. It's very sad. That's our next target here in New York City, Jim Kerr. we got to compete against a jukebox. So I guess they learned uh, a good strategy is to play the rock stars on their records on your station and not put them behind the mics as the host of your station. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. That's a little, <laughs> a little smarter. They just moved it a little over to the right. Right. You want, you want Van Halen? Play the album. Don't put the singer in front of a microphone. Yeah. You ready for a douche chill? We had some great right. comments about Mel Gibson yesterday. Yeah. Some terrific stuff. Some great comedy. Edgy comedy. Ooh. Michael Starr just ignored everything we said yesterday on the radio. And he, and he says, uh, Jim Kerr commenting on what Mel Gibson was drinking before his alleged anti-Semitic rant. Mm -hmm. The quote from Jim Kerr yesterday morning. Here it is. Probably wasn't kosher. That made the New York paper. That, that's terrible. What I'm sorry. he was drinking was probably 
not kosher. Jim Manish Kersh would say that as funnier. he's queuing up a Zeppelin song and loading a shotgun at the same time. <laughs> With a toe trigger attachment. To blast his <laughs> awful brains all over the inside of the studio. The line is so awful, but Michael Starr thinks it's so terrific. It has to be in the New York Post because today. Michael yeah, Starr is a douche. But we forgot about the uh, the 12-step program for Mel Gibson that the Daily News printed up today. Oh, you know, when the newspapers get a hold of a subject uh, and they can make comedy of it. Yeah, you want It's here. always gold. Making mirth, Ant. Making some, mirth. Oh, some of the funniest stuff you're going to read is when the newspapers decide, decide to take a comic angle. On uh, one of the top stories. Yeah. Yeah. So they got a 12, uh, a 12 step program for Mel Gibson. All right. Starting with number 12, Anthony. Oh, we're counting backwards. I like the idea of counting backwards. Backwards. As atonement. Uh, well, is that the best one, though? Uh, They're all, they all no, stink. They, they, so okay. how can you tell if you should go from one down or 12 up? Because there's numbers in front of them. That's the only way to tell. All right. Well, you want to start with one? Because I guess if it is 12 steps, you got to start. You got to start with yeah. the boy uh, up. Wait a look at the program. I'm smart. I'll say. As atonement. <laughs> no, that's 12. Aren't we supposed to read 12? No, Anthony, we're going. You don't go step 12 to step 1. Nobody starts at the top of the steps. All of a sudden, you're going to walk back up the steps. Oh, you okay. start from the bottom. All number right. 1. And you work your way to 12. Sorry. Can't get past the hunk on the Here bottom. Here we go. That's true. He's dreamy. Who number 1. As atonement. <laughs> oh. Number 1. Read the diary of Anne oh. Frank. That's fucking much depressing. Why would you? There's no laughs in that. Till the end. Night by Eli Wiesel. And the that's on, uh, that's on uh, Oprah's book club. The Chosen. <laughs> that's by. That's Oprah's selection. Is Night. it? Night. I missed it completely. I hate when I miss something. What, what do we miss? Boys? Damn it. What do we miss? I don't want to wait for the replay. I, can't I, wanna, for the replay I need a DVR in front of me for this show. <laughs> he said there's nothing funny about reading me. Until the end. Man. I heard that. Until the end? Yeah, that was good. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's, like, that's like watching Roots backwards. So it has a happy ending. <laughs> From, I thought that was all right. That was all right. I don't yeah. know. Number one I makes heard no sense. I that joke when I was in sixth grade. Was, oh, I, no. This is going to be an 11-step program because What do you I'm get done. when you play a country song backwards? What? I'm not telling you. Why? Um, wait, wait, wait. Um, Pull your stuff back. <laughs> yeah, oh. you do. That's pretty funny. Something about a dog, a car, and your wife. I don't remember that. <laughs> all right, go ahead, man. Sorry. Oh, The Chosen by... Chaim, Chaim Potak. Potak from Beirut to Jerusalem by Thomas Friedman and Maus by Art Spiegelman. So he's got to do a lot of reading in the first by time. by Jews, all all uh, Jewish art author authors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two, see the film. Uh, the film's Life is Beautiful, Sophie's Choice, Schindler's List, even Exodus. <sighs> Watch Paper Clips, a documentary about Christian children who, to comprehend the number of Jews killed in the Holocaust, collected six million paper clips. Wait a minute. I don't <laughs> I don't get that. Well they collected paper clips and wow, that's a lot so of paper clips, so that's yeah, a lot six of million is just a number, but right. if you have six million of something in front of you, like wow, why I didn't, why did I they, didn't realize then why it's a lot they of dead Jews. Make it easier though, like um like six million atoms or yes. electrons. Because when you collect six million paper clips, you, it gives you a, vis, a visualization of, but, of how, how many thin they were. But who? <laughs> and my, oh my god, I knew someone was going to say it. Believe me, it popped in my head the second I read it. Bob Kelly, he doesn't get paid. What are you going to do? Just a guest on but, the Open Anthony but, show. But Who's gonna, I promise we'll ban him for life. <laughs> Easy. Why? If it What's means going we on? I'm a little drunk. I'm just drunk. Oh. Hey, hey, fuck me in the ass. Fuck I can't you. drink on the fuck fucking show. Fuck you, cop. Are and you a paperclip? Yeah, you, you fucking, fucking paperclip. Hey, hey, I heard the paperclips are cops now. You <laughs> paperclips start all the wars. Yeah, paperclips run Hollywood, haven't you heard? Um, <laughs> visit the Holocaust Museum in New York, Washington, and Jerusalem. So he's got to go on a little tour. Yeah, in Jerusalem. Right there. Oh, that's good to go. Uh, I, I accidentally went into the one in Boston. It's like right on the sidewalk. Isn't that creepy? You're just walking in Boston. All of a sudden, you're in like some steamy right. They're all right steam. over there at Faneuil Hall. Yeah. yeah. You know what They're that all steam is, right? What? That's the supposed bones of like the Jews. The, I thought it was supposed to be like the gas or something. Yeah, it's the gas. It represents underneath. like the gas. So yeah. all of a sudden, you're walking through, and, and you're in like gas. 
and there's like glass walls with yep. names on them and stuff. Yeah. It's all creepy. And then you're, you're like, what the hell am I in? Oh, a Holocaust uh, oh. memorial. But right near all the bars, yeah, right the, near all the party of spots. Of course, yeah. I mean, drunk. So you could get drunk and yeah. get gassed. Right, let's go. Visit Auschwitz. That's the fifth step of the 12 step program. Yes. For uh, six. Mel Gibson. Or the Western Wall. Mm -hmm. Seven, read the Old Testament. Number nine works. I think he's probably read the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eight, go to a Passover Seder. Nine, or a Sabbath dinner. <laughs> That's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I don't know how that would help, but just sitting there with Ozzy, yeah. these are <laughs> yeah. guys, Tony and Bill, just talking about uh, Jewish people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ozzy, pass the, the fucking salt. Jews <laughs> don't understand everything, Mel. I don't understand why people don't like them. Look at the fucking thing. It's paper clips, mate. It's everyone I deal with is Jewish. <laughs> the <fucking> Sharon, <laughs> the, the dealing with money is all Jews. Check, please. Fucking sensitive. Ten, sit, shiver. Sit Shiva. What is that? I believe that's when a Jewish person dies. They sit Shiva. Yeah. It's sitting on a box <sighs> for a certain period of time. I love number 11. Have a sit down with Mel Brooks, Woody Allen, and Billy Crystal. <laughs> Isn't that capital punishment? <laughs> that's terrific. Well, that's terrific. Mel Brooks and Woody would be a wonderful oh. sit down, but why would you want to sit down with Billy? So you could ask for a picture when you have the same manager and he oh. goes, No cameras! So you could talk about Ooh, Mickey Mantle resentment. again. So you could go, hey, can I get a picture? I thought you were really great tonight. I'm a comedian. No cameras! Yeah. But I said I was a comedian. No cameras! Right. Sorry, I just figured we were expressing the same yeah. art form. No cameras! Uh, the uh, Hold the grudge. Oh, for the, I uh, believe me. I hold the grudge like the JDL. <laughs> no kidding, man. Amazing. It's unbelievable. Jesus. Oh. He never forgets. Did you get that never tattoo? Never forget. <laughs> Jimmy needs to never forget. Never tattoo. forget <laughs> that Billy Crystal blew me off for a photo. He doesn't like the Holocaust. It was a photo Holocaust. He doesn't even follow the Yankees anymore. Guaranteed his number. He doesn't that even follow the Yankees anymore. No. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Why would I? <laughs> exactly. I spoke my mind about that whole situation. They're in first situation. place. Situation. What? They're in first Who cares? place. Cares. Do you still mad at them? Give a fuck what they do, yeah. He'll be mad at them. I will always be mad. Forever. Yeah, it's, uh, you, gee, that's just how he is. <laughs> <laughs> we, we accept it now. <laughs> He's looking for a Red Sox hat. <laughs> really? Speak, he, yeah. he doesn't understand forgiveness or anything. Not for that. Stuff. I love Rivera, though. I'll always root for Mo. Aww. All right. Good old Mo. Freaking lizard face. Twelve, uh, the twelfth step. <laughs> I freaking hate Mo. Twelfth step. As atonement, eat ten pounds of pastrami, which Zero Mostel said, quote, killed more Jews than Hitler. You fish-faced enemy of the people. Did Zero Mostel say that? Well, Daily News is terrific with their comedy writing. It's just wonderful. I thought that was oh. supposed to be comedy. I don't know. I don't know what it was supposed to be. Wasn't there a comedy one? Because <laughs> I don't think that was it. All right. Uh, I think they were being serious. 